Solar water distiller on the cheap using plastic totes. These are plastic totes. They are bins to store things. They also make great solar water distillers, and that's what this video is all about. The three blue boxes you see in this Google SketchUp image are the symbols of three totes that I acquired. And I have a design idea that I would like to share with viewers who want to have drinking water that isn't contaminated with toxic industrial waste from fertilizer plants, nuclear bomb production, and the aluminum industry. There are five things I want to point out in this image. First, notice that the totes are arranged so that it's easy for water to drip down the edges. These totes are very good at keeping the wind out, but they are not watertight, and the distilled water can easily leak into my collection jugs below. Some of you guys look at my design and say, I can improve it already. Just use a PVC pipe to collect the water from the two totes on the right and let all of them drain into the collection jug that is lowest. And I think you guys are more capable than most. I put up my design and it's a box and people ask for blueprints. I say, you need blueprints to build a box? If you can't build a box, the blueprints aren't going to help you. So as you look at my design, you're going to see ways to improve it. And that's why I'm sharing it. I want the best solar water distiller I can come up with. And if you guys help me, that's okay. I did not patent this, and it's also not copyright protected. It's open source in the service to others mentality, which benefits everyone in the long run. You will notice that there are shelves inside the totes. The lid of the tote is between the shelves and the wall that supports the shelves and the totes. You can't see it, but each shelf is a little lower than the shelf to the right of it. This is so water can be pumped into the tray to the far right and flow all the way to the far left tote and then back to the heater, which I will show you later. The tote in the middle I had, and the label was removed a while back, so I don't know the capacity, but it might be 28 quarts. The tote on the left is a recent purchase, December of 2015 at Walmart. It is 64 quarts, and it cost me $6.44. I'm using it now on a flat table, and it's very productive. In a year's time, that tote will pay for itself one and a half times. The return on investment is 145% annually, based on four ounces a day, 300 days a year. The tote to the far right is a more recent purchase, January of 2016, and it's 90 quarts, costing me $10.98 at Walmart. It was a letdown, and I think it might be too large. Both the 64-quart tote and the 90-quart tote on the far left and far right are Sterile Light brand, if you want to know. Look at the red line. That is the sunny side of the wall. Note that the totes are on the shady side, and that's because I'm not using the totes to heat up the water. I have a solar hot water heater to do that, and you can build one easily using half-inch irrigation hose from Home Depot or Lowe's or maybe Target. You get 100 feet for about $11. What's that, 10 cents per foot or so? I'll show you that later. I have a flat solar hot water heater that is 12 feet 7 inches long and 3 feet 10 inches wide. And you can see the tip of it in this image on the far left on the far side of the wall. That's the sunny side. The solar panel heats the water and the totes condense water vapor to make distilled water. 
Plastic is not a good conductor of heat, but it works okay. I'll get into the details later about that. Let me lay down the basics first, then we will get into a comprehensive discussion so you know exactly what's going on here and why this design is so brilliant. Nobody is using totes to distill water. Nobody is using a solar hot water heater to raise the temperature of tap water so it evaporates and nobody puts the condenser in the shade. These are all my innovations and I want to share them with you. The solar hot water heater raises the temperature to about 100 degrees to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and then it flows through the tote condensers for distillation. Distilled water rolls down the sides and falls into your collection jugs. A water pump from an evaporative cooler raises the water just four inches and gravity takes it through the entire system of three totes. Let's move in for a close-up so you can see more. It's now worse yet. Oh, that's not so life. Sorry, that's my native language. We are looking at the center tote. You see an evaporation tray and a line coming in from the tote on the right. The outflow will take the water to the tote on the left. The black line to your right marks the level of the exit line from the higher tank. The black line on your left marks the lower pipe, and that's an outflow tube. It takes water to the tote to the left. And the lowest line in the middle tote evaporation tray is the highest line, or the incoming line, on that far left tote. It is important that you understand this or you won't know how this system works. Water flows downhill by gravity to service all three totes and supply them with warm water for evaporation. This is how we get distilled water. If that water comes in at 140 degrees Fahrenheit from the solar hot water heater, it is going to evaporate fastest in the first tote it enters the far right 90 quart. This might be a good reason to keep three jugs underneath in order to sample three different flavor varieties. Can distilled water vary in taste at various temperatures of evaporation? There is a good chance that it can because both water and the contaminants have a vapor pressure at various temperatures and their own boiling point. So if you increase the production of distilled water, you're getting contaminants that you don't want, don't need, and don't enjoy drinking, like, like fluoride. fluoride. I would rather drink a glass full of cow piss than drink fluoride rat poison. But even cows are drinking fluoridated water. A good scientist can address this question of flavor as a function of temperature by experimenting. If you want to be a good scientist, do testing. If all three jugs have a good flavor and you're not tasting toxic industrial waste and rat poison in your drinking water, then you have found the sweet spot. I can assure you that boiling water to distill it is not the best idea humans ever had. It evaporates with a lot less industrial waste at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 140 max. Fluorosilicic acid has a boiling point of 227 degrees Fahrenheit. And water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The boiling point of the good stuff and the bad stuff are only 15 degrees apart on the Fahrenheit scale. This is terribly dangerous. It's like riding a motorcycle down the yellow line with cars on the right and cars coming in the opposite direction on your left. Fluoride is more deadly than lead. 
If you are boiling water into a vapor, you're boiling out fluorosilicic acid as well. Does that seem reasonable? Anything that boils will have a boiling point and a vapor pressure that grows exponentially as the substance heats up. The object is to get the water out and leave the industrial wastes behind. You buy distilled water. Does that mean it's pure water, unadulterated water? Hell no! If they boil the water to distill it, you're screwed! You're getting fluoride in your distilled water. The higher the temperature, the more fluoride will evaporate. The distillation plants know this, but they want to maximize production. And so you get fluoride in your distilled water, but they don't tell you that. Some of the plant managers might not even know it. Incompetence is everywhere. And your health suffers as a result. Do these distilled water producers have the proper test equipment and do they use it? Apparently not. I think they should invest and test each batch. There is a device that tests for fluoride, you know? It's about $200, but it makes no sense for 300 million Americans to each buy one. That's a waste of $60 billion. We could buy beer with that. If you had a tester, you could test distilled water at various evaporation temperatures to see which contains the least amount of rat poison and then stick with that temperature. Regulate your system to maintain that most desirable temperature. In Arizona, the summer temperatures would make that water 160 degrees, I think. Increase the size of your hot water storage tank in order to keep the water temperature at that sweet spot. You can turn off your solar hot water heater, you know. You want the water to come out and the fluoride to stay behind. Don't dump the toxic water on the ground. It will kill the vegetation. That's what makes it a toxic environmental hazard. The fascists know this, and they pass on their costs and toxic waste problems to you. If you discard it into the toilet, it goes downstream, doesn't it? Isn't this a toxic waste problem for somebody downstream? Is this responsible, or is this an environmental nightmare like the nuclear meltdown at Fukushima? Note that it's the same people. They won't allow us to have free energy devices. And this is what happens when they build nuclear power plants and make a killing off the contracts. It's a wealth transfer system. And who benefits? They do. Who suffers? We all do, including them. Their families also live in a fluoride toxic nightmare, don't they? So it's more responsible to solve the problem in the proper way at the fertilizer plant, the aluminum factory, and the nuclear bomb production facility, isn't it? Flushing the toilet and sending your problems downstream should never happen. They should never put toxic, hazardous waste into our drinking water in the first place. And it's all your fault because you're not screaming. Call the water company every day and try to talk sense to these people. Ask who is the person responsible for poisoning our water supply. We want a name. We want to sue him or her. Someone should start a list of people who will cooperate in a class action lawsuit against all dentists, doctors, and government people who advocate the poisoning of our water supply. We need a lawyer like Karen Hudis on our side. But most lawyers are too busy making a killing to do anything for us or their own families. I consider it a serious problem that direly needs attention now. 
not 50 years from now, but now. I drink distilled water and get heartburn because of the toxic chemicals in it. Even if you distill your own water and pour the rest down the toilet, the problem isn't solved. Because that toxic industrial waste goes into the lakes and ponds, rivers and oceans, and we don't want this. Fluoride is more toxic than lead. Dumping it into our lakes, rivers, streams, ponds, oceans, or our water supply is as irresponsible as building nuclear power plants in earthquake zones or near the ocean. Look at Fukushima. It poisoned the entire Pacific Ocean. And fallout readings are 10 times normal on the northern coast of California. This is wrong. Those oceans circulate the globe. How can we contain the radiation? It's already causing cancer in humans at an alarming rate. And the state-controlled media isn't covering this catastrophe. If you find the temperature at which you ingest the minimum amount of fluoride, rat poison, insecticide, you're good, maybe. What about those people downstream when you flush this garbage down the toilet? This is like pooping in the river and not caring if the people downstream are dunking buckets to get some water for cooking. Fluoride destroys our environment. All of us share one environment, and we must be responsible. Government has too much power, and they use it to force us to drink their industrial wastes. In 1913, the Federal Reserve Act was signed by Woodrow Wilson, who swapped campaign financing for this terrible legislation which gave a private cartel of bankers a monopoly on the nation's currency. It was an awful mistake, and Woodrow Wilson knew it. And in 1919, five years before he died of syphilis, he acknowledged his mistake. He said he had ruined his country, and he was a most unhappy man. The promise was sold to the gullible public that the Federal Reserve would stabilize the dollar and help hold its value. For the past 100 years, these people with the monopoly on the nation's currency have crashed the economy, bought up all the best real estate, businesses, and stocks, and become enormously wealthy parasites, and we the people have lost 99% of the value of the dollar. They lied to us, and they also robbed us blind. Now they are poisoning us by dumping their toxic chemicals into our water supply and spoiling the environment with fluoride, which is more toxic than lead. More toxic than lead. More toxic than lead. What kind of government would do this to its own people? A fascist government? Yes. A totalitarian government? Yes. A benevolent, altruistic government? Hell no, there's no such thing. All governments are pure evil. Why do you suppose the framers of the U.S. Constitution said, That government is best which governs least. They were aware of the evil of government, and their prescription was, Less is better. What do we have today? We have a federal government that is completely out of control, with a gun in your face on every issue, forcing us to buy health insurance and confiscating our pay right out of our paychecks before we even see it. They lie about the unemployment rate, and they caused the unemployment in the first place. Soon they will take your bank deposits, and when the people protest, they have built 
1,300 FEMA camps and trains that can carry 15 million people per trip. So where do you think this will all end? Your last day will be spent in a FEMA camp in a building that is airtight. I suspect you will be gassed by these Nazis, just as the Nazis under Adolf Hitler did. All the FEMA camps are near railways, so your dead body might wind up at the underground facility at the Denver airport, where there is conveniently a crematory to burn the bodies so that nobody ever finds out. And who controls the media? Same murderers. If they would use drones to kill innocent civilians in foreign countries, what do you suppose they will do to us here in America? This is not what America is all about. And all Americans must recognize the threats and eliminate them. How? By speaking out first. We must bring the people up to speed. If you are one of the enlightened ones, then it is your duty to be a leader. Spread the truth and let's make others aware. It is not okay to flush fluoride down the toilet and pass the toxic problem downstream to someone who is defenseless like a fish or a child. We must be respectful of other people. In a free society, there is no gun in your face and the value of human life is at infinity. In a totalitarian state, a fascist state, a Nazi regime, the value of human life falls to zero. The only thing that matters is money, and one person has it all. The rest starve. They die of thirst. They die of illnesses caused by fluoride and other toxic industrial wastes. If you are young, you must act now. Your life is ahead of you. What kind of world do you want to live in? Decide and then act accordingly. We can't just poop in the river and let it flow downstream because there are kids involved. Where is your humanity? It's all about money. You only have two choices because this water fluoridation is forced upon us at gunpoint. You can drink the shit, or you can send it along and poison someone else's water supply. Like the rigged elections, you have to choose the lesser of two evils. This isn't how it should be, and if you know it and you don't act, you are guilty. The sewer treatment facility does not remove fluoride. They treat the water and release it so it can kill all the fish. Is this what we want? No. We want an environment that is safe for fish, kids, and old people in sneakers and on rollerblades. Bones are so brittle that when old people fall, they break a hip. Fluoride causes that. Old people want to have fun. And fluoride lays them up in the hospital for six months in intensive care, running up a hospital bill of $200,000 per day. And who pays this? You do. Doctors are making a killing. But you are going broke. And they are placing the burden on your children and the children of your children who haven't even been born yet. Is this fair? You will not find many doctors speaking out about a corrupt and evil system that is making them rich. Hospitals charge $3,000 for a doctor who walks in, looks at your chart, and leaves. What kind of bullshit is this? They are forcing us all to buy Obama's health care plan, and Obama doesn't care. He's a foreigner. Why should he care? He doesn't give a rat's ass about you, me, or old people who still skydive. He wants us all dead. 
And that's why he signed an executive order granting himself the right to kill anyone at any time for any reason. What kind of bullshit is this? We need government like we need painful hemorrhoids. Government is a painful hemorrhoid. It is your government that is poisoning your water. So you have to build a solar water distiller. It saves the corporations a bundle, but we, the people, are in the hospital with various ailments, many of which can be traced back to fluoridation of the water, but the government hides the facts from us. They deliberately lie to us. Government is force. Government is organized crime. These are acts of war against the American people by the American government, a bunch of fascists who care more about money than the people who pay all their bills. These deeds of chemical poisoning are illegal under the Geneva Conventions Treaty. I consider them chemical and biological weapons in their effect on us. Any government that poisons kids is not fit to lead. In some poor neighborhoods, the occurrence of fluorosis is 80%. What kind of bullshit is that? That's government bullshit, if you ask me. Kids are stupid because of the fluoride. Harvard did the tests on it. As the level of fluoride in the water increased, the IQ scores decreased. They fell like building number seven. Cause, effect. Same people did both. Harvard University is making the connection between low IQ scores and the level of fluoride in the blood of school kids. This traces back to their drinking water. This is a crime against defenseless kids by an evil government. Whereas there is a connection between high fluoride levels in the drinking water and low IQ scores, there is no relationship whatsoever between the decline of tooth decay and water fluoridation. Fluoridation is not responsible for the drop in tooth decay. How could there be? You have been misled again. The decline in tooth decay started dropping in the 1930s, some 25 years before the fascists started poisoning our water supply with fluoride in the mid-1950s. This is why we need solar water distillers, and the people are so stupid that they don't know about the boiling point of fluorosilicic acid. The vapor pressure of both water and fluorosilicic acid. And they can't understand how boiling water doesn't remove much of the rat poison therein. Here's the graph. This is the vapor pressure of water at various temperatures. Recall from grade school that boiling point is when vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure. When the vapor pressure of water reaches 760 torr, whatever you have in the pot is free to go. People have an osmotic filter under the sink and they think they're good. Bullshit. Water can pass when the opening is 0 0.8 nanometers. And the fluoride complexes pass when the opening is 1.5 nanometers. There isn't an osmotic filter on this planet that has holes of 0 0.8 nanometers in size. That's what you need to let the water through without the fluoride complexes. At 1.5 nanometers, all of it gets through, and the osmotic filters we have today have holes much larger than 1.5 nanometers. And so fluoride gets through like rats through a picket fence. The holes must be made with precision, and at 0 0.5 nanometers, nothing gets through. No water, no rat poison fluoride. 
we have a new material which might allow us to start with seawater and in seconds have pure water, not distilled water with contaminants, but 100% water without any garbage or industrial waste. We have to be able to make holes with precision. The new material is called graphene. We can make holes that are 0.8 nanometers in size using lithium, I think. Graphene is all carbons, but when lithium is interlaced, the openings are just right, 0.8 nanometers. You won't see these filters for at least 20 years. The fascists will block them because if you're not stupefied by the fluoride, you just might protest the bullshit we see in Washington and overthrow the government. For this reason, they will stop any development that allows seawater to become fresh water easily and cheaply. That goes for your fluoridated water as well. I read about these developments in materials, and it's 20 years before we see shit. If you want to drink water that isn't contaminated with industrial wastes, you're going to have to be a good scientist, a good designer, builder of solar distillers, an inventor, a researcher, and maybe you can escape the tyranny until they make it illegal to modify your water for health purposes. Like I said, government is criminal and we need government like we need syphilis. But at least syphilis is curable, government is not. The only way to escape the tyranny of gun-in-your-face government is to secede. Go out the red door marked secession and free yourself from tyranny. We have discussed the design and the reasons for constructing a solar water distiller. The discussion about government is absolutely necessary. Your motivation is based on what government is doing to you and your family. There wouldn't be any need if not for the government's war criminal deed, now would there? Let's be honest about it. The government commits crimes against its own people. This is wrong. Everyone should speak out to bring about changes. Do you think it's ever going to change if you accept it, get used to it, and stop pushing the war criminals back? You are surrendering to tyranny, dictatorship, and we were not born to be slaves, were we? You know my reasons for building a solar water distiller, and you have seen my design. One last thing to mention, and I'm done. I mentioned a pump to you, and it costs about $20. It's an evaporative cooler pump designed to move a lot of water. This pump is ideal for moving 500 gallons of water from a jacuzzi through a solar water heater, but you don't need to move so much water in this distiller design. I think three or four gallons per hour is enough. There are pumps out there which can move water at this rate. Here is one for $8 at Amazon. It moves just 80 gallons per hour. That's less than half the evaporative cooler pump. But when you read the fine print, there is a problem. Do you see it? I added it in large text. It will move water up 0.8 meter, which is about 31 inches. I'm okay with that. My design only requires that water be pumped up 4 inches, so the pump should last a long time. That's not the problem. At Amazon.com, people ask questions. I like that. I read them all. Someone asked about water temperature. And that is a good question, isn't it? The seller said he looked at the type of plastic used and he thinks that 45 degrees Celsius is the limit. That's 113 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know of any plastic that melts at temperatures below 300 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Type 2 plastic is HDPE, or high density propyl ethylene. And I have seen it melted on a YouTube video. And I have also tried it myself. And at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, that plastic started to melt in just five minutes in a toaster oven with a hot coil on top, looking down on the can of soft plastic. I seriously doubt that this 45 degrees Celsius is correct. I think the pump can take temperatures of at least 167 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius. Here is an aquarium pump for $16. It pumps 3.5 gallons per hour, and that's more like it. But there is no way to know what temperature it's designed for. The pump is for a reptile cage. I don't know what temperatures the reptiles like or how this is used. The shipping charges are not mentioned. Here is another vendor, same pump. For $20.50, you get free shipping, so that takes the mystery out of the shipping charges. But there is no mention of the maximum temperature of the water that is pumped, so I pass. Here is a pump for $5.99 with free shipping and look at the maximum temperature, 75 degrees Celsius or 167 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm sold, but I can't jump into the water yet. I need to know if there are any more sharks circling. Take your time, read everything, and don't run off with a hot idea because you need to ponder your moves before you act. What kind of problem might you have? Look at the shipping date. Today is February 8th, 2016. And when will this pump arrive at the latest? March 22nd, 2016. That's six weeks. This thing is coming from China, isn't it? Are Chinese goods quality? Or is it a lot of junk? I have found many things sold by the Chinese to be completely useless. I bought a 64 megabyte thumb drive and it never worked. I tried to return it and couldn't even get a reply from Amazon.com or the seller. They used to reverse the charge, but Amazon.com has changed dramatically. You must be very, very careful when you order from Crooks. They know the 64 megabyte thumb drive doesn't work and they don't care. It's hit and run and Amazon.com backs them, not you. Your money is gone. I used to buy one item each month from Amazon and recently they told me that I haven't made a purchase for six months. I'm being very careful and you should also be very careful when you buy online. Many crooks will take your money and give you nothing in return for it. When both the vendor and Amazon conspire to cheat you, you're going to lose. So if you have been buying from Amazon.com, keep in mind what I said. Walmart will take my items back. I bought a garden hose, returned it, got another. Returned it and got a third garden hose, and it also did not work as needed, and they handed me a full refund. You can buy beer with that money. I didn't get a useful 64 megabyte thumb drive from this Amazon vendor, and right now there's some Chinese guy drinking my beer and likely laughing his ass off at the stupid Americans who will buy anything. Okay, Amazon, you screwed me, but I haven't made a purchase in more than six months. So who won in the end? I'm going to tell the world on my YouTube channel. You will not get away with screwing me. I also bought a Shake flashlight, and it worked for a short time and then stopped. I asked for my money back. And they told me to take a hike. Okay, I'll hike over to YouTube and make a video. How do you like that? Here is the record. 
purchased on July 28, 2012. It arrived a week or two later. Stopped working on November 12, 2012. So I had it for about three months before it stopped working, and I didn't use it every day. I might have used it four or five times in three months. It was a piece of junk. So that's why I'm telling you to read a lot, consider many items, and don't buy too hastily. There is no urgency here. Start with one tote and see how it goes. That's what I did, and now I have three. I'm drinking good-tasting distilled water every day, and I'm up to about 8 ounces per day. I need 64 ounces per day every day, so I want to build the one you see and test it. You can be sure that I will come back here and tell you how things are going. I will have a new design, and maybe it will be even better than the one I showed you today. We all need to share our ideas and benefit others. I create a design, and you see it, build it, and make improvements. I see your improvements and build a new one with your ideas implemented. I make a video, and others are inspired to build one also. Soon we have no fluoride in our water, the government is gone, and we're all drinking beer to celebrate. This is where I want to leave it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Sorry, that's my native language. We are looking at the center tote. You see an evaporation tray and a line coming in from the tote on the right. The outflow will take the water to the tote on the left. The black line to your right marks the level of the exit line from the higher tank. The black line on your left marks the lower pipe, and that's an outflow tube. It takes water to the tote to the left. And the lowest line in the middle tote evaporation tray is the highest line, or the incoming line, on that far left tote. It is important that you understand this or you won't know how this system works. Water flows downhill by gravity to service all three totes and supply them with warm water for evaporation. This is how we get distilled water. If that water comes in at 140 degrees Fahrenheit from the solar hot water heater, it is going to evaporate fastest in the first tote it enters, the far right 90 quart. This might be a good reason to keep three jugs underneath in order to sample three different flavor varieties. Can distilled water vary in taste at various temperatures of evaporation? There is a good chance that it can, because both water and the contaminants have a vapor pressure at various temperatures. Solar water distiller on the cheap using plastic totes. These are plastic totes. They are bins to store things. They also make great solar water distillers, and that's what this video is all about. The three blue boxes you see in this Google SketchUp image are the symbols of three totes that I acquired, and I have a design idea that I would like to share with viewers who want to have drinking water that isn't contaminated with toxic industrial waste from fertilizer plants, nuclear bomb production, and the aluminum industry. There are five things I want to point out in this image. First, notice that the totes are arranged so that it's easy for water to drip down the edges. These totes are very good at keeping the wind out, but they are not watertight, and the distilled water can easily leak into my collection jugs below. Some of you guys look at my design and say, I can improve it already. Just use a PVC pipe to collect the water from the two totes on the right and let all of them drain into the collection jug that is lowest. And I think you guys are more capable than most. I put up my design and it's a box and people ask for blueprints. I say, you need blueprints to build a box? 
If you can't build a box, the blueprints aren't going to help you. So as you look at my design, you're going to see ways to improve it. And that's why I'm sharing it. I want the best solar water distiller I can come up with. And if you guys help me, that's okay. I did not patent this, and it's also not copyright protected. It's open source in the service to others mentality, which benefits everyone in the long run. You will notice that there are shelves inside the totes. The lid of the tote is between the shelves and the wall that supports the shelves and the totes. You can't see it, but each shelf is a little lower than the shelf to the right of it. This is so water can be pumped into the tray to the far right and flow all the way to the far left tote and then back to the heater, which I will show you later. The tote in the middle I had, and the label was removed a while back, so I don't know the capacity, but it might be 28 quarts. The tote on the left is a recent purchase, December of 2015 at Walmart. It is 64 quarts and it cost me $6.44. I'm using it now on a flat table and it's very productive. In a year's time, that tote will pay for itself one and a half times air vapor to make distilled water. Plastic is not a good conductor of heat, but it works okay. I'll get into the details later about that. Let me lay down the basics first, then we will get into a comprehensive discussion so you know exactly what's going on here and why this design is so brilliant. Nobody is using totes to distill water. Nobody is using a solar hot water heater to raise the temperature of tap water so it evaporates and nobody puts the condenser in the shade. These are all my innovations and I want to share them with you. The solar hot water heater raises the temperature to about 100 degrees to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and then it flows through the tote condensers for distillation. Distilled water rolls down the sides and falls into your collection jugs. A water pump from an evaporative cooler raises the water just four inches and gravity takes it through the entire system of three totes. Let's move in for a close-up so you can see more. It's now worse yet. Oh, that mess of that new life. The return on investment is 145% annually. Based on 4 ounces a day, 300 days a year. The tote to the far right is a more recent purchase, January of 2016, and it's 90 quarts, costing me $10.98 at Walmart. It was a letdown, and I think it might be too large. Both the 64-quart tote and the 90-quart tote on the far left and far right are Sterile Light brand, if you want to know. Look at the red line. That is the sunny side of the wall. Note that the totes are on the shady side, and that's because I'm not using the totes to heat up the water. I have a solar hot water heater to do that, and you can build one easily using half-inch irrigation hose from Home Depot or Lowe's or maybe Target. You get 100 feet for about $11. What's that, 10 cents per foot or so? I'll show you that later. I have a flat solar hot water heater that is 12 feet 7 inches long and 3 feet 10 inches wide. And you can see the tip of it in this image on the far left on the far side of the wall. That's the sunny side. 
The solar panel heats the water and the totes condense water.